First, I would like to say thank you to organizers to arrange this very nice uh, uh, conference. And I'm really glad that you put me into this program. And uh, I have to ask for apology if I process your question a little bit slow. I just fly from Tokyo, so this is about midnight or something. My brain still <laughs> try to put it up. <coughs> so this is a joint work with uh, Christina Donati and then uh, Svetlana Pachenko. Um, She's supposed to present here today, but I'm sorry that she needs to substitute. Uh, uh, I'm going to substitute her. The title of the paper is The Lifetime Cost of Bad Health. The way we think about the broad question that we think about this paper is we try to think about why bad health is bad from economic perspective. So it's not difficult to motivate that bad health make people work less and earn less if working, which is also support in the data. And they also face higher medical expenditure. And on top of that, they also have lower uh, life expectancy. But in this paper, we try to think a little bit further. We try to think about bad health is not just one shot shock. It's kind of very high persistent. So if we want to think about the consequence of bad health, maybe we should look a little bit longer. So it depends on how long the sickness will last. And health is persistent. And this can be complicated when we put in the context of the incomplete market. So the, our stand in this paper is health is like underlying shock, and it's going to affect people's decision over the life cycle. <clears throat> so why we think about the, the long-term <coughs> consequence of bad health or the accumulated effect of bad health is big. So we, one thing we can look at, it, we can look into the well documented in the data, the wealth health gradients. So this one, we look into the composition of people that look homogeneous. So we look into the people who get the highest education exactly at high school level among male. We take HRS, which is look at people at age 51 to 55 until they, 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 they die, if they, we can track all of them. And we are from 1994 to 2012. In this graph, the horizon axis is age. And then the vertical axis is the median wealth of the people. And when we talk about the net worth here, we control for the family size composition. So what we see here, the green line is the net worth uh, they are switching. So this is cross-sectional one. So we're going to talk a little bit more. So, so they're not, the same they're not the same people. We don't track the same people. We just take the cross-sectional and look at what it looks like. So this is what the data look like. So this is the median wealth conditioning that the people self-report that they are healthy. By healthy, we mean that in the PSID or HRS, they have a self-report health status. We group people who are excellent, very good, and good as healthy. And people who are bad health is people who self-report as fair and poor. For the people who self-report as fair and poor, if you look into the median wealth of them, they're going to be on this late line. To emphasize a little bit, we just take the difference between this gap and plot into this bar chart. So what you can expect, take it from here, is that the wealth gap is quite big, particularly around retirement age. The difference in terms of median wealth is around 100K. On top of that, we can call this is the well health gradient. The well health gradient actually fan out much earlier than this age 51 or 55. So when we want to think about the consequence of bad health, maybe this motivates us to think about we need to look into the whole life cycle. Yes, please. Um, is it the people themselves who tell you that they are in poor, very poor, or very poor health? Right. So, it, so it's nothing that you have decided what is poor health or good health? This is come from, direct from the data. They asked the, the, the person to respond that, can you rank your health status into five categories? Uh -huh. And then uh, this is their report. And then I just grouped them into two groups. <coughs> so before we, we start talking about the effect of health and economics outcome, we need to think about what economists actually think about the, con uh, the causality direction. One way that we think about health is exogenous. It's kind of shock, people just suddenly get sick, and then health will affect economic outcome through the channel of labor income, medical expenditure. Another alternative we can think about is health is actually endogenous. People can do something about their health. They can invest in their health stock. So in this consequence, it's going to be like economic outcome, which is, can be the wealth, the income that people have, will have the effect on their health because they can do health investment. Alternative, the third channel can be because people are different. People have different characteristics or factors that can affect both health outcome and economic. 
one way you think about this one is like a, um, uh, one thing that I, I tend to think about is the self-control. The self-control is the, the characteristic of the people that can affect their choice of their lifestyle and they might think about how they value the future which is going to affect their economic decision as well. So in this paper, we take a stand on the first, the channel one and channel three. So we take health as the exogenous and we incorporate and try to understand the consequence in the com incomplete market when people are exposed to this shock. Um, let me give you the, the outline of what is actually what we did in this paper. So the first part of the paper, we try to understand the dynamic of the health shock. Remember, we talk about health as a uh, two state, good health and bad health. We try to understand that, the dynamic of it. We're going to document some fact from the PSID data. And then we're going to estimate, come up with a parsimonious model that uh, capture that dynamic. After that, we're going to incorporate this into the life cycle model. But our parsimonious model, we try to identify two sources of the persistence of he bad health. People, when they fall into bad health, normally they have low probability to recover. So what is the source of it? One source is can be duration dependent. So the idea behind is that the longer the person spend time unhealthy, the less likely that they're going to recover. If I fall sick the first time, I still have a good chance. But the second year I fall sick, the chance will be lower. And when the third year is going to be lower, that is what I, we call duration dependence. The other one is the fixed health type. So this one you can think about it the lifestyle or the gene that people adopted from their parents and that can affect their dynamic of their, their health status later in the future. In the second part, we take that estimate of the health shock process. We incorporate into the life cycle model. Our life cycle model tend to have a feature that it's going to capture the effect of bad health to life expectancy and medical spending. So this is kind of exogenous and hardwiring. When people become bad health, they need to have high medical expenditure in terms of mean increase, variant increase, life expectancy also shorter, survival is lower. Our model also match income health gradient. This is the fact that normally people in bad health, they're going to have lower income than people in the good health. And the well health gradient, this is the picture that I show you at the beginning of the talk. And we're going to use this model to think about three questions. The first one is, what is the monetary loss due to bad health if we look into the whole life cycle? We don't have the data that track people for the whole life cycle, but we have the model we can simulate and see what is the cost of this if we look into the term of the whole life cycle perspective. The next one we can think about, use the model to think about why people value good health, why we, we want to be in a healthy state. What is the channel that gives this value? You can think about that to answer this one is like, we want to know what is the demand for health investment. If you can do something with health, why you want to buy good health. The last one, we want to try to map health uncertainty. Health is an underlying chalk state and it's going to affect inequality over the life cycle. We try to understand how we're going to map this uncertainty in terms of the lifetime inequality. Yes, please. In this one. Right, we, 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 we shut down the channel that people actually, they can do anything <coughs> about this. You can generate endogenous of the inequality that induced by health if you can do something. We don't have that channel incorporated in here. To incorporate that channel, we need the uh, additional component of the model, the health investment component. We don't have that in here. So the data that we use, we're going to use HRS, which is a survey of the, uh, the older age people and track people every two years. That is the data that I use to construct the first graph that I show you. And the main data that actually we use in terms of estimate health chalk process and caribbean life cycle is come from PSID. We mainly use the part that they have annual data. So from 1984 to 1997, that is the part that we use for the health chalk process and income process. But for the wealth, basically, there are more wealth data after this one. So we combine these two data when we look into the wealth and control for the year effect. And 
in PSID, they don't have the data of medical spending. So we're going to use information from MEPS, which has the data on medical spending, on the health insurance that people purchase, and opportunity to get up offer from health insurance from employer. So we're going to use. So our strategy is we try to use these two set of the data to disciplinize of our model. And then we're going to try to cross check the prediction of our model with HRS. So the, the layout of the talk, I'm going to start with the health chart process, and then we're going to move on to talk about life cycle model and then the result. So this, I'm going to show you a bunch of graph <coughs> from here, and um, this is about the health status. Remember, we have good health and bad health. So this is the, uh, the horizon axis is always eight. So start from the eight, being up 20 to 24, and up to here is 70 to 75, and this 75 plus. So this graph, is the red line it come from PSID, the class one is come from HRS. So this one is nothing new. This is report, the fraction of the people who sell report that they are unhealthy. This is also cross-sectional, that is no, uh, it diff come from different people. So what we see here is that when people get older, we tend to get more of the fraction of the people get into bad health. The last two is kind of more like a dynamic. The transition of the people, this one we track people who switch their health from one period to another period. So this is the transition from bad to good. So this is the report, the fraction of the people who move from, from bad to good. So basically recovery, you can think about this as recovery probability. And it's not surprised that recovery probability is declining over age. When people get older, the chance to get out of the bad health become low and lower. This one go opposite. This is from good to bad. So basically, the chance that people get hit by a bad health shock is going to be increased over age. So that is, this is already well documented in, in literature. So what we try to think a little bit further and document in this paper, we try to think about what is the persistence of the health chart or health status if we look into the longer duration part. So this is what we call duration dependent so profile. Can I answer a question? You, the data has five types. The data have five types. Right, I think, um, first, if we can, we're going to have to model the health shock that we're going to have, but if we're going to have the five health, the identification or how to estimate that health shock process is... You're doing it wrong on purpose. Um, really, no, I'm not saying it with that, I don't want to mean it right now. Right. Even if there is no duration dependence whatsoever, when you look at it from the from the lens of having only two types of health, right. it's going to look like duration dependence. What I can it's going to give you the same number of states as if you had five. Right. What 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 we can what we can defend on this point is that we actually try to look into go back to look into the five health. The sample size will be smaller, particularly for this. Let me talk about this, and then I'm going to talk about when we look into the five health. So in this one, we still stick to the two health that we group them, and then we tend to look into the transition from bad to good. This is the recovery. I'm going to tell you, this is the last time I passed the cells are getting a lot smaller, so the because you have now a bunch right. of beams by length. That, that is a fair comment. So, I right. That's not the reason not to do it with five. I, let, let me explain this graph and then I, I try to say what I can try to check what, what your concern. So in this graph, we look into the horizon is the period that people spend time being unhealthy. So the first bar is in the data, we observe that observation, spending time unhealthy for at least one period. What is the probability to recover among those groups is around 35. But if the person spent at least two years in unhealthy, so what is the probability is going to be dropped. And we're going to continue here, it's going to be lower and lower. What, what Victor is concerned is that maybe because there is heterogeneity in terms of unhealthy. So people who spend time here, actually, they are really, really sick. And we, because of we group them together, that's why we see this pattern. So that is a fair comment. 
So what we can do using the PSID is we are going to look into we construct the same, but we look into only health data that's poor. So here composed of poor and uh, up fair and poor. So what we do is that we kick out the poor out. What we worry is that maybe this is the people who report, sell report that they are poor and they are actually in here. So basically this is just because of they are poor health and poor health tend to have more persistent. So we kick out the poor and look into the fair. The sample size becomes smaller, but we still see declining pattern over here. But it's going to be noisy around this, this part. So that is uh, the, the, the part that we can verify that the declining here, if we go back to the original one, we, we, we still see the declining pattern. So what we think about how to explain this, suppose we think about the health composed of good health and bad health. How are we going to explain this one? There are two possible stories. The first one is the duration dependence. The longer the person spend time unhealthy, the probability that they're going to recover is going to be lower. If you're going to model that, you're going to think about you need higher order Markov or the model that is show the duration dependence. Another story is can be because people are ex ante different. So basically, people who are in this group, there are some group that has a higher property to recover. So they get out. So people in here is going to be the people who basically they have lower chance ex ante to recover. So that is two sides of the story. We construct the same, but look into the opposite transition, transition from good to bad. So this is the one that fall into the bad health. For this one, we construct the same. The horizon is the duration that how many periods spend time on good health. What we see is that we don't see that continuous declining probability. We see that if people are good health for at least one year, the property to get good uh, health shock is around 4%. But if he continuing to be healthy longer, the probability to, to get hit by bad health is dropped, but it's not dropped that much after three, three duration that there is spent time in good health. So if I'm thinking about the motivation of a good health shock in this one, I might think about Markov 2 or Markov 3 might be enough to capture that one. So that is the motivation that we're going to uh, use it to construct and propose what is the probability of transition look like. So the first one that I'm going to show you is the property that people get into um, property to be healthy if unhealthy. So this is a property to be recovered. It's composed of three components. The first one is the duration component part. So this coefficient, if the person is uh, unhealthy for one period, it's going to operate. But if it's going to be uh, unhealthy more than two periods, it's, this term is going to operate. So basically, we impose Markov 2 in here. We also try to estimate by extend it to be Markov 3, so basically add another term. This change is the trans, this term is if the person unhealthy for two years, and add another term if the person unhealthy for at least three, more than three years. Our estimate is, is, is not much different. So we truncate to two because we're going to bake it into the, the, the life cycle model. So we save the state, state variable. The second component is the age dependent component because we still want to capture the probability that when people get older, the probability to be recovered is declining. And the last one is the health type, which is captured ex ante different. People are different ex ante, and then that affects their recovery probability. So you're not worried about the reactions agents can take to draw back to the, the speed of recovery? Uh, So that if we, we worry about that part, but in order to identify that, what, is the ch what, what we can do to recover ourselves, that means you need to estimate kind of the production function of, of the health treatment. And that one, we don't have it. And the data that we have, we don't think it can clearly identify that one. So we take this approach because of we're going to try to think about health as underlying shocks. And think it's like a, how much this shock is going to cost people. And then later on, I think it's still important to think about endogenous health investment. But at least before we move to that one, add complication by <coughs> add the component of health investment, we at least we should ask, answer important question. What is the motive for invest in health? Why people buy health? 
So understand that you're going to create the demand feature, and then the health investment is the supply side. So we try to look into one side. That, that is the approach that we look at. So sorry, this L type, that's your targeted to age, but at what age? Is this this one is this one is independent of age. So the part that is so dependent. Of age and some date, but if you have a dynamic process, by definition, it, it becomes the orthogonality is less as you progress. That's which was stated earlier. It, it would be very easy to estimate that and have unobserved types and recover the parameters, the whatever A or Bs. This is well known. This is known how to do that in the new method. So what do you think about? We should have like a coefficient of age dependent embed in here. That is. Orthogonal at the initial date by construction, when you follow the process, the orthogonality is thus by construction. Mm -hmm. So that means among us, population of people who have, as far as I can see, become from healthy to, to unhealthy at, at a given age, they're no longer, the type is no longer orthogonal. But it's very easy to account for with your data. You know, this sort of uh, process in micro read uh, econometrics is very easy to estimate. In, in in, so you in, have a distribution on the L type uh, for its data? You mean, you mean this eta type? Yeah, or whatever this is. This, this is, a, this is um, I'm not quite sure I understand what, what, what you mean, but this one is an observed health type, okay. and we're going to recover the distribution of this one. Okay. And we allow only a dependent only through this component. We don't think we can identify if we allow it. Dependent on this, we can uh, separately identify it. So that means you, you tackle the problem of duration dependence aside from unobserved heterogeneity. Right. Okay, I thought from what you said earlier that you avoid one of the issues. Okay, that's fine. So, isn't, isn't there another possibility that there, there are different types of bad health states, some that last that are fundamentally long-lasting and others that are not long-lasting. That does go back to, to Victor's comment that actually, if we think about health as a continuous a measurement, for example, that there might be different persistent of different point on the measurement of that one. So we don't have that because in the end, you need to come up with the health index and estimate the health pro the process of that dynamic. We don't know how to do that one. So what we do is we just take the health data the best way we maybe we can look into more like original five health data group instead of looking at two as what we do. But I think go further to what is the measurement of the health. You can think about the health is the measurement of continuous and persistent on each point is different. So I think it's, we don't know how to come up with the model with that, that dynamic yet. Do you know why people are in bad health? Why people are in bad health? You mean like a... In PSID, they don't have, but HIS, they, they, they have the, the health re cell report health status, and they also have some other kind of health condition that is more objective measure. So what most of the people that they use this data set, they try to come up with a single health index using the principal component analysis, incorporate both objective and uh, cell report health. What they found is that the cell report health still have, it become a, like a big, big weight on that, that, that part. Well, I was thinking so the, the conditions that people have, they might matter for the persistence, for example. Right? So there might be some information in there. Right. So what, what, you, what we can do is what we can do is that try to see what is the condition of show the descriptive one. What is the condition of the people has when they self report tell what kind of disease, what kind of condition that they have. But we try to come up with some kind of group them as the index. That, that, that is what we do in here. So for the for the un Probability to be unhealthy, so this is a health chunk. We follow the same pattern. What we are do different is that we allow this health type to affect differently on the property to get bad health chunk. And then we assume the distribution of this one to be uniform over uh, around zero and symmetric over five grid points. What we estimate, basically we use simulated method of moment. What we try to do is basically match all the point that this is the fraction of unhealthy. This is the dynamic of the transition of bad to good. This is from good to bad. And this is the duration dependent profile. The Y bar is from our model. The shade one is from the data. And the solid line is from the model. And the dot is from the data. 
And this is for the first eight group that I just showed you. This is age 30 to 54. But if you look into all the all across age group, this is 50 to 69, and this is 75 up. So basically, we, we, we use all this as our target moment in order to identify the parameter of, of this set. And then, what is the implication of our health shock process? This is the part that the probability to recover move from bad to good. So you see different color line here. Each line represents each health type. So this eta 5, we call the best health type because the probability to recover is pretty high. And the eta 1, this is the worst health type, the probability to recover is pretty low. Over here, you might see two lines almost on top of each other, the solid line and the dashed line. That is come from the duration dependent part. So if the person is unhealthy for, for, for more than two years, it's going to be solid line. If it's just one, it's going to be dashed line. So it's almost on top of each other. What we learn from here is that what we, our estimates show that the probability to recover is controlled by this health type. The duration dependent is not pretty much role. And what I mean when I try to extend this term to be like a duration for three period, we still see the big role of the health type that show up in here. Um, we're going to have the data that we try to map. What is health type in HIS? And you, rec you can recover that from revealed choice, isn't it? You see what people do, and if, according to your theory, it should behave very differently. We cannot do with PSID, but what we can do, maybe we can do... Right, I, I see your point. That what we have is that we don't observe this. But you know that what we know prediction of this one is health type will correlate strongly with the number of years that people spend unhealthy. And we observe the number of unhealthy year, how many years a person spent unhealthy in our data. So we can use that one to map into economic choice of people. <coughs> um, but this one imply the number of years that people actually will end up unhealthy. I'm going to have another graph after this one to show you how to map that. <coughs> so, um, Sorry, but that would be very easy to do. You, you simply need to assimilate the distribution of your unobserved type, then you simulate your model conditional on this, and then you will recover exactly what was asked. But how, how are we going to map back into the data? Well, you will base on, on realized data, on realized outcomes that are amenable to your model. For example, if you read Keenan Wolfen or papers like that, this is done. This is very common to do. Because um, you know, you have estimated the types of individuals who are healthy and unhealthy from day zero, right? Right. So you can reconstruct the choice and the outcomes of all these fake individuals and then you recover a large data set, that data set will give you, you'll be able to map, of course, choices onto or, or health shocks or sort of health heterogeneity onto outcomes. That is, if you simulate your model post-estimation, you, you should be able to do that. Um, maybe our estimation is, is kind of simpler than that. So basically, we just want to map. Our estimation process is try to match all these moments. And I don't see how we can map this back into the data. But what we, I'm going to show you one slide how to think about this health type. If you wait one, one time, and maybe you can suggest how I map into what, what, you, what you mentioned. So this is a probability to recover, controlled mostly by health type. Probability to get, get hit by bad health depend on the period that people spend time on healthy, healthy. So basically, all the color is on top of each other. 
So there is no row of the health type. So basically estimate of the beta B3 over here is zero. <coughs> but this one you can think about, this is a property that the person is spent healthy for at least two years. The property to get uh, bad health is pretty low. But if the person kind of already get bad health and come back to good health, so they just good health for one period, the probability to relapse is much higher in this one. So the, what we take from here is that the probability from good to bad is kind of duration dependent. And this is the one that maybe kind of we can map some health type back into the data. So what we hear in here, look in here, we go back to HIS. And we look into the sample that we take. We take people at age 50 to 56, and we pick only healthy people. And we track them every period. So HIS is every, every two years, so we track them at age 57, 59, 61, 63, and 65. And we, call, we document what is the he cell report health of this group. And we plot the distribution of this uh, number of years that people report that they are unhealthy. So basically, there are around 66% of the people who are healthy at 55. And then after that, every two years, we record that they never report that they are unhealthy. But there are some number, around 5%, that after we saw them healthy in at 55, 56, and then after that, four years and five years is around 5% that they all in the remaining that we observe them, they're almost unhealthy all the time. So, and the shade line, the, the light shade one, is come from the simulation that come from our model. And this is another one that we can map into the data. So what we think about is people in bad health type experience will experience multiple unhealthy years. So this is come from our model. So we look into at age 57, uh, this is the same sample that I show you, between 57 to 65, there are around 26% of the people, 26% um, of people that we simulate in um, unhealthy for zero and one year. So basically, it's going to be this two bar. Around 26% has bad health type. And then around 71% is the people who actually end up here. That is come from the model. So basically, what we do, we try to say is that we don't observe health type in the data, but we observe this correlation from the prediction of the model. The people who spend a lot of unhealthy year in the data, they're going to be mostly composed of the bad health type. And how we can think about bad health type? Now we will look into the characteristic of the people when they report when they are age 55. Over here, we look into some characteristic. This is the percentage of the people that they say they are smoking based on the number of unhealthy year. And this is the body mass index, the median one. What we see is that a lot of people who end up like a report four to five times over uh, five observations that we see, 43% report that they are smoking. And if we look into their parents, is alive or not, we see that people who self-report that they are unhealthy for many years, a lot of them, their parent is not arrived now. And then we can see the education is also correlated with the education of the parents as well. So we can think about the health type, maybe it's like a lifestyle, or it's maybe some gene or how parents raise their children. So this... Let me see if I understand this. So, so this is a persistent, in the past it's persistent. And you can say, I'm going to give two candidate explanations for that. One is you got unlucky and you get two bad things in a row. Mm -hmm. And then I want to test one mechanism, the other mechanism is you are doomed from the start. And it looks to me that the doom from the start is like a residual. Whatever is not hardwired in the repetition is going to be picked by this. Am I, am, am I correct in saying that, that the, the type is like a box for everything else? Um. Because in, in, in basically, if we look into the mechanic of this one, how we want to capture the, 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 num the, the observation that we see a lot of people is unhealthy for, for a lot of longer period. Since the only alternative that you give to the end of the bad type, and therefore nothing you can do about, is that you got two bad draws in a row, or three bad draws in a row. 
then whatever cannot be accounted by that mechanism, it's solid this time. Is that statistic? We're not talking about the statistical mechanism. Is that fair to say? There's also the growing colder, but the answer, on that, that, on the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yes, it's a bit. So, you, so of course, the growing older is there, but there. That's a way of loading a lot of a lot of the outcomes of the, this persistence into nothing you can do about it. And these guys already know it. Mm -hmm. it almost the same. Is that by assumption or am, am I missing something? It, I think it's, 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 it's by assumption for sure, because that is what, what we impose in here. And the way we can think about this one is like uh, when we look into the labor income shock, we can think about, we estimate the coefficients of the persistence, and then we have a fixed effect type in the labor productivity. So this one is kind of imitated one. And the duration dependent part actually is kind of maybe we think about it's like a correlation if we, we go back to think about the, the auto correlation in the labor income. So it kind of imitate that, that aspect. I just have a quick question about this before you switch this slide. Hmm? Does it matter at all that you allow more flexibility in the type to matter for transitions from good to bad, meaning you have that B3G coefficient in front of eta there, which we impose it to be one in the specification on the left hand side? Basically, this is like a normalized part that we need to normalize this one to be one, right? Because of in the end, you, you mean like a, this one should have, is it, should, should we have coefficients? Yeah, yeah, I'm wondering, should you or should you not? Basically, it's going to pick up by one of these, right? If I add this one to be some number, that means this term is not going to be mean zero anymore. <laughs> there will be some constant, and then constant will pick up by this. I just want to I, I find it weird that you estimate two different things, and I don't understand why is it that you do two different things. Do you mean like a y hell type tend to... Why the process on the left and the process of the, on the right look different from the get-go, the, the, the specification? We that I don't understand. What does that mean by we try to... So we, we, we assume it to be like a parallel to each other. Well, the, except for the last <coughs> but in the end, how to identify this thing is come from this moment that we impose in. Right? Because of we, as I point out that the property to recover actually has declining. But for this one, it's kind of flat and sharp over here. So basically, if you think about looking in this one, kind of guess that it's going to be the hell type will not play a much role from the beginning. Okay, so okay, okay. Basically it just come from the moment so that we you, we impose that. The is that if that DG parameter is seven or point one, you claim it has no mean. Um that's the thing is a V3G. That's your claim. But that's that's what I understand that your answer is. Basically <laughs> it has no Role in terms of change of probability over here. It's like a standard error of the residuals. Is that what I, which, the way we should interpret that? If, if it's very different from one, is that the, the left side has better good method fit than the right side, or vice versa? Is that the way to interpret that? It's not a standard error, but just the number, <laughs> the point estimate of this one. Let's imagine that number is seven, your point estimate. <coughs> Is that the correct interpretation? I'm asking to the, the parameter estimates about the goodness of fit coming to the right or maybe not the don't worry about it. The the interpretation Can I ask you one? Yep. It's actually going back to my previous question. Mm -hmm. Um I understand that you estimated that the high will health, so like whether they are healthy or not, using the probability from that then to the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, can can you say it again? No, so if there is like uh, there is uh, there's just some actions this agents can make to recover fast, then I think this type is going to be a function of their income or wealth, which is not captured in your direction. 
we don't we don't have any income or wealth in here yet. What we see is that if yeah, we just look into It actually not exogenous types of their house, but there might be the function of their income. Um, Don't you need to um, take that into account when you're looking at these types of their house? You say that... I'm not quite sure how to map that. If we, we think about health type is the derivation that come from the resources that people have and maybe affect the way that people can endogenize the way to get back to good health. <coughs> but what we have in the life cycle model, what we're going to bake this thing in, this thing will correlate with wealth in order to generate the composition effect. But when you endogenize the health investment, maybe this is the health type, something that we, we that may when you endogenize the health investment, maybe you can get the wealth and this health type endogenous in that model, but not in the one that we have in here. <coughs> but maybe I can talk to you later about this point. So what we're going to do next is, I'm going to estimate this this life cycle model. Okay, I'm going to take that, that um, the health chart that I have, put into the life cycle model. So what we have, the key mechanism is that we're going to try to get the model to generate the wealth health gradients. And the wealth health gradient comes from two components. One is the direct causality. Because of bad health tend to decrease labor productivity, increase this utility to, to work. So basically the employment rate among unhealthy is lower. And then we're going to, they also increase the medical spending and lower the life expectancy. So that is uh, because of Life expectancy is like a, you, you reduce the discount factor. And then the composition effect. This part, we have the health type, and we allow this thing to correlate with the discount factor that people have. And this thing to correlate is going to generate a composition difference and generate the well health gradients. So how we do that? When people born into the model at age 20, they need to draw two things. One is health type, the other one is the discount factor. And these two things kind of correlate when they draw to this probability that we need to estimate in the model. And then people also face incomplete market, we're going to face, face labor income shock and correlate with health and medical expenditure and survival uncertainty. For the retired people, we model that they just retire and receive social security. They still face medical expenditure risk, but covered by Medicare. So this is the timing of the model. So basically, people born and draw these two, uh, the health type and the discount factor. And then at the beginning of the period, they don't know the history of their health. They know their productivity that correlate with health. And then some of them get the group employer sponsored health insurance from the employer, which also correlate with health and correlate with uh, labor productivity. At this point, people choose their labor supply. We assume it to be discrete choice, work or not work. And then the health insurance choice that they can, they can make. And later on, they receive the medical expenditure shock, which depends on their health status. And uh, this is the coverage depend on their health insurance choice. Some of them, they're going to get minimum consumption transfer because of uh, we cannot get negative consumption. And then at this point, they're going to make saving and consumption. When they, if they arrive, they're going to continue renew the dynamic problem. If they die, they're going to get request. Utility, we assume it to be CRA. And if they work, they're going to lose this utility, this term, fee the bill. And if they are unhealthy, they're going to lose additional more. So these two parameters, basically, we use it to match the employment rate by health status of good health and bad health. On top of that, we're going to assume there are some positive term add to this one. The reason that we need this one, because of this term is always negative. And we want to think about the value of good health, so we need to make sure that people value to be alive. So basically what we do is we, we, we just rescale this term until the lowest guy get the zero utility. Why? What's the purpose of that? Because health affects survival, probability. So and we want to make sure we want to measure how much people value but to be we're going to compare this one with the empirical estimate of the statistical value of life when we estimate the model. Oh, so you're only going to do that for what? 
to welfare, right? Not because of effects and right, because of this additive term. The estimation of the model is, is, is orthogonal to this number. So, so, so in this one, we assume that there is no learning about what is your type. So they born, they know this one. So basically, we think about this one maybe embed from adopt that from their parents. I can observe my parents, and then what is their their probability that they get some kind of serious disease or the lifestyle that people might have. So we assume full information on this one. But given the um, the health process that you put in the model, how long would it take? Um, I cannot answer that one. How long the if if we assume that the agent do not know this health type and how long the learning from each draw that they draw good health or bad health, they can do back out that. Um, I don't know the speed of that that learning in here. So um, we estimate this model. The key moment that we match is we match the wealth profile and the employment profile and the average labor income of the people. So this is the income health gradient. This is the wealth health gradient. So you have a fundamental thing. You have ten. You have the fractions of types that you. Are some of the some of the parameters that you. I have the type that come from the health module that we estimate. So that basically we assume in this distribution that to be uniform, far equal weight over this one. Is there any reason for that? Um, there is no reason for that. We can so try. When you are early, when you estimated the process for that, was that conditional on, on the infant types? Like right. <coughs> so basically the, the estimation of us basically the same exactly chalk process when we port into, put it into the life cycle part. So let me try to speed up a little bit. So what we, we do is that we estimate this. There are some parts that we estimate outside the model. What I want to point out is that we have the labor income which is a health <coughs> dependent. So basically what we do is that when people become unhealthy, their labor productivity drops with this term. This is the age dependent labor productivity profile, which is depend on health type. And then there are fixed labor productivity, and this is the AR1 process. We estimate AR1 process with this uh, chalk property that uh, we got the persistent 0.92, and the other term well, is well, constant. How can you, you don't know the eye of these people, so how can you do this? Uh, which, what, what the, I don't know. In individual fixed effect, and this is orthogonal to. So you're using a different letter than for type. Right, right. So this is the fixed productivity type. And then, so this is the estimate result that we got. We got the beta. Uh, uh, the low one is 0.9. The high one is 0.99. And this is the correlation between health type and people who has in, uh, low beta. So basically, this is the worst health type. The people who has worse health type, the chance that they're going to draw when they get into the model become a low beta is around 0.9. This is the best health type, easy to recover. The chance that they're going to draw when they get into the model with a low beta is pretty low, around 0 0.2, 0 0.12. So, and this one is the one that, that I mean that's going to generate the, 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 the composition different because you might think about people who end up in the bad health is going to to mostly come from these two, and then they're going to be low beta. And this is the statistical value of life due to uh, the time constraint. What we do is that we just put the, 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 lowest, the lowest possible utility flow, least scale it to be zero, and add that term. Compare with the data, we, in the data there is an estimate of the statistical value of life, which is if you're going to add one death, among 10,000 people, how much you need to compensate. The literature is looked by looking into the wage compensation difference, and then the data estimate around two to nine million. What we got is around six <coughs> million from the way that we rescale the, the utility level to be zero. And then this is the wealth moment that we match. 
So let me try to go. How many minutes I have left? Ten minutes. Okay. So what we're going to talk about the result? We're going to talk about here. So the first one I'm going to talk about the importance of composition difference. So if we look into what I'm going to show you here is the the wealth gap between good health and bad health at 25th percentile, and this is at the median, and then the 75th percentile. The wealth gap between good health and bad health at 25th percentile is around 41. Our baseline estimate is around 54, and the median is 97. We got around 100. If we shut down the correlation between beta and health type, so that means you assume that when people get into the model, what they draw, they just draw with a 50-50% to get the low beta. And then you re-estimate the model. So it's the same, same, same thing in this. So the guys who, the guys who are more patient are also the seeker. The guy who more patient going to be less sick. Less sick. So same thing. The worst, so the way to make sense of this is that the worst outlook in, in life, life horizon that these guys have is insufficient to account for their low savings over time, and you have to impute the rest to being impatient. That's you exactly understand that. right. And that's not coming from anything else, right. like, uh, like being single or like being having worse growth in income. There's nothing like that. So basically, we, we have two effects to generate the well health gradients. One is the direct effect, which is the health effect, income, high medical expense. And then the remaining, we identify by the composition of the correlation dis between these two. So saying that sick people are not poor enough in your model. If they were equally patient, sick people are not poor enough in your model. Right. One thing that uh, maybe I go back to see this one. So this one is the wealth between, this is the wealth profile. Horizon is the age. So the green is the, for the healthy, and this is unhealthy. One thing that why we need the composition, we just look into the dash one. This comes from the data. Because the well health gradient is actually start fanning much early in age. So how are we going to generate that one? The drop in income and the medical expenditure among this group is not big enough to get this well gap over here. So that's why we need additional mechanism, which is a composition difference. Do you have housing in this definition of wealth? It is in there. The, the net worth includes the housing well. Is too. that not the problem given that these people are actually choosing <coughs> in our own categories? I mean, housing is much more of a the, stock. The way people construct to look into the well health gradients, you still see the different gap here, even though the definition of well, you remove the housing well. So the, the point of, of us is that to account for this, you cannot use only direct causality effect from bad health, get low income, get high medical expense. For the low age, you need some other thing to add to that one. And then, um, so let me talk about the lifetime cost of bad health. We have the whole model, and we want to understand how much the cost over the life due to bad health. What we do is that we just take the counter simulation, we make everyone in our model in the baseline. Instead of they have bad draw of bad health, we just reset every time. They still face the same health shock, but we just reset every time they draw. They're going to draw only good health. And we compute what is the earning loss compared between the two worlds, earning loss and medical loss between that two worlds. During the working age, and we consider only people who survive up to age 64 to remove the mortality by us. So this is the, the, the average loss per year of the people. On average, if you compare with the average income, so basically in the whole working age population, the loss due to bad health on average is around 1.8% of average labor income. Basically, each year they lost about 1.8% of, of, of labor income over the working age. But this is the number of years that people become unhealthy. So if they're unhealthy for one and a half year, they lost around, uh, this is around, um, $652 per year. But if they're unhealthy more than 20 years, on average, they're going to lose almost 7,000 per year over the whole working age. And if we look into the composition of this one, so this is come from the labor earning loss. 
this top part, the light shade, this is come from medical expenditure part. So basically, the medic, um, this is the part that pay by health insurance. This is the part that pay by out of pocket. So basically, the health insurance cover this part. Basically, in, in, in the, if this bar, if you construct it, it's around 30%. And another 20% is covered by out of pocket. Average, labor, uh, the labor earning loss account around 50%. So basically, the loss over the life cycle, in terms of the monetary, mostly will come from labor income part. That is the message from this. Um, why is that? Per, per, But um, but every year, every year you will lose this this amount. Um, let me try to go to the time that I have. So basically, I'm going to talk about why people value good health. So in this one, we have three channels that people, people have good health, prefer to have good health. They, they do not lose labor income. They have low medical expenditure if they have good health, and they live longer. So what we do in this experiment is that we're going to give opportunity people to buy a treatment or technology that improve their chance to be healthy by one percentage point. So you can think about that is a medicine. If the medicine you pop in, the property that you're going to be healthy next period is increased by one percentage point. After that, you're going to go back to the status quo. So we ask how much people are willing to pay for, for this one. So this is a baseline economy. So depend on the health, on, on average, people are willing to pay around 10% of their annual earning for, to buy that treatment. And, but it depends on the health time. People with the birth health high, they're willing to pay more because of bad health among this group is very persistent, so they're willing to pay more. Compared to this group, if they're unhealthy, they have a good chance to recover, so basically they're willing to pay less. But the point that we want to know is that which part that, which, how much is come, come from each channel of this one? In our experiment, basically, we're going to allow one channel operate at a time. So we're going to construct another cultural factual world that, uh, Bad health only affects survival channel. And then we see how much people are willing to pay for this treatment. The number is over here is 80% of, they're going to be willing to pay 80% of this value. So basically the majority of, of, of this willingness to pay for that treatment come from the survival channel. If we go to the labor market, people are willing to pay around 18% and medical expenditure is quite small. And we look into different in terms of health type Basically, the number is kind of consistent. So what we learn from here is that survival channel is quite important for people to value their life. Is that a function of that B in the utility function? The, the, the right. That, that's that B affect this one. Right. 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 And the last experiment, do I still have oh, about yeah. two or three minutes? Um, <laughs> um, this is the last experiment. So basically in this one, we want to see how health actually map into lifetime inequality. So we're going to look into two cases. We're going to construct economy that everyone always draw good health. They still face the health shock process, but every time they draw, they just luck, surprisingly lucky, always healthy. And we construct two cases. The case that the, we fix the age of their death at in the baseline. And the other one, normally when people become healthy, the survival property become higher, so some of them will be good luck and live longer. So we're going to have two cases. The first one, we fix the age of death, we call exclusive survival channel. And the other one, we allow people to live longer when they draw good, good health, the property to be healthy will become higher, they're going to live longer, we call include survival. The measure of our like we look, we define the measure of lifetime utility, basically consistent with the dynamic programming of the household. So basically the discount 
utility of the people based on consumption, labor, and hours that people actually draw because we're going to simulate a bunch of people. We can compute this measure of the people in the baseline and we can compute the measure of the people in the counterfactual world that they always draw good health. And we compute the variation in terms of this lifetime utility that due to that they draw bad health. And we see how much when we make people become healthy all the time, what is the reduction <coughs> in the variation of this lifetime utility? And this is what we got. So if we look into the lifetime utility, the variation, we divide it by the, 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 the discount factor. So if we exclude the survival, so the deduction is around 7% or less than 1%. But if we include the survival channel, so basically the reduction when we remove the bad health shock realization, it reduced almost 42 or 12% depend on the, the, the discount factor that people has. So due to I have no time left, so let me conclude that in this paper, we tend to quantify the effect of, of, of health over the life cycle. We estimate the health shock process that have the importance of the health type and we show that the composition difference is important to account for the well health gradient. And we show how we calculate and point out that the survival channel is the most important to be a good health. Yep. Maybe one, one last question. One first and last mm -hmm. question. What fraction of the lifetime inequality is due to the L type? Due to, to, due to the... the distribution of the unobserved type from the beginning, the, what you call the L type. Actually, is it small or large? It is small. So it's small. Because of... <laughs> okay. <laughs> In standard life, cy life cycle earnings model, that would be very big. Right? It would be like always between 60 and 90 percent. You mean learning about health type? Well, suppose you, you want to compute the life cycle inequality in what what is imputable to say types at age 16, that would, that would account for 80-90%. Mm. So that seems to be very small, so that means the initial L, whatever, status of the individual is virtually irrelevant, is it? Um, the point is why it's small, because of the, the chance that people draw the bad health, it's quite small. The property to get the bad health is small. Even though people were born with the bad health type, but not everyone will fall into bad health. It's just only people who are lucky to draw bad health and then they're going to continue to be bad health. It's like a, a time bomb that if you don't trick that time bomb, it's not going to affect you. So it affects the tail of the wealth, dis of the inequality distribution, but it's not every like on average. Quickly, so, uh, uh, just as a general comment, it was mentioned before that this was sort of predetermined and that you know you don't have a chance because, uh, but that's that's not true at all uh, because a lot of this is environmental. If your parents are well off and well educated, mm -hmm. they will be teaching you proper health habits mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also whether whether or not you become educated and then wealthy is not a, uh, a genetic thing. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who were, let's say, born into uh, relatively poor families, but did get an education and change that, that pattern. So uh, it is not predetermined any of this. So, so what I try to say that health type is something that formulate before people get into the labor market at age 20 or yeah. early that one. But it can be and formed it's through. Sort of predetermined, you know. It's, it's not that, oh, if your parents were uneducated, then you haven't got a chance. No. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents could have been well educated, and then your cycle would have been completely different. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody who's well educated uh, comes from a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. Got it. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.